Microban 24 doesn't just kill bacteria once then stop, it keeps killing bacteria for 24 hours. Just spray and let dry to form a shield that's proven to keep killing bacteria for 24 hours. Touch after touch. Microban 24. We are hyped also. Yes. Tomorrow, Drew Barrymore will be our guest co-host from the iconic Paramount Studios. She is our sister. For sure she Keep is. Family. Yeah, we're also going to have the cast of Dancing with the Stars Season 30 revealed. Big deal. Hey, and thank you to Warner Brothers Studio oh, yeah. Tour Hollywood yeah. for letting us host from these classic sitcom sets. Um, by the way, you can come see them in person. Happening now. You're a traitor against Americans. This is a free nation. It's a viral video of a woman upset with mask mandates confronting Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf. Coming up, the woman and the judge respond to the incident. And yet another controversial bill signed into law by Governor Greg Abbott today. What is in the Texas voting rights law and why Democrats in Texas are looking to Washington, D.C. to reverse it? Now, some areas in the KSAT 12 viewing area are getting rain, and so we'll have a look at radar coming up and a look at a stretch of triple-digit heat, but it's not as bad as it seems. The News at 5 starts right now. And first at 5, a video circulating on social media showing one woman's frustration with wearing masks. The video is of a woman recording while she's following Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf out of a local HEB while calling him names for imposing mask mandates. Tiffany Huertas takes a look at that video and explains this isn't the first time Judge Wolf has been confronted with frustration during the pandemic. As Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf pushed his shopping cart to his car, a San Antonio woman unhappy with mask mandates began following him and recording him. Putting masks on kids, that's child abuse. In the video, the woman calling him different names. He's a traitor, Nelson Wolf's a traitor and a communist. The video posted on Instagram by Ashley Rock's hair. It happened at the HEB on Northwest Military Highway on Sunday. In a statement to KSAT, Ashley reasoned with her video, saying in part, quote, this is far bigger than just Nelson Wolf. We the people need to know who stands for us and not against us, end quote. A spokesperson for the county says there was no altercation and no one was harmed. It's unclear if Wolf filed a complaint with a law enforcement agency, but he did release a statement in in response to the video. He says, I realize after a year and a half, we all are experiencing COVID fatigue from wearing masks and other public health guidelines. Now is not the time to stop and let our guard down. Our numbers are coming down slowly. Let's keep this downward trend going, mask up, keep social distance and sanitize. We reached out to HEB and local law enforcement, but haven't heard back. This is at least the second public incident Wolf has been involved in over masks. In June 2020, Wolf was in a checkout line at a Lowe's store when a cashier told a customer that wearing a mask was required. The customer grew upset, so Wolf intervened. The judge tried to hand the customer a business card and the man smacked the business card out of Wolf's hand. The man involved was arrested and he was charged with disorderly conduct, a misdemeanor. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. Now to another big story we've been following today. After a months long battle trying to prevent a controversial voting bill from passing in the state legislature, it is now law. Today, Governor Greg Abbott signed off on Senate Bill 1. Those for the bill say it aims to ensure election security. Those against it claim it unfairly targets minority communities in the state. ABC's Alex Prochet has a story. Texas's highly controversial voting rights bill now is law, even after Democrats fled the state to keep it from passing. One thing that all Texans can agree, and that is that we must have trust and confidence in our elections. Called the Election Integrity Priority Bill, or SB1, state Republicans argue it makes it easier to vote by expanding the required early voting hours. Critics point to the law's added restrictions. It bans drive through and overnight early voting, something popular in heavily Democrat-leaning Harris County. It also adds new ID requirements for absentee voting. Although there was no evidence of widespread voter fraud in the 2020 election, both the governor and lieutenant governor claim the bill will deter alleged cheaters from casting fraudulent votes. The Texas law, it does make it easier than ever before for anybody to go cast a ballot. It does also, however, however, make sure that it is harder for people to cheat at the ballot box in Texas. 
Poll watchers will also have more free movement within a polling place, and election judges who obstruct them could face criminal penalties. The legislation will go into effect on December 3rd and is already being challenged in several lawsuits. The ACLU and others accusing Republican lawmakers of violating the Federal Voting Rights Act and intentionally discriminating against minorities. Democrats in Congress want to pass new voting rights protections at the federal level, but have been unable to due to opposition from Senate Republicans. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. Now, immediately after Governor Abbott uh, signed SB1 into law, the nation's oldest and largest Latino organization filed a federal lawsuit. LULAC, now the latest civil rights organization to take on the voting bill in federal court. The governor saying it does not surprise him, but he is, quote, extremely confident the law will be upheld in the courts. He says it's about voter integrity. Civil rights groups say it is voter suppression. The issue stirring up a lot of emotion on both sides, especially after Texas House Democrats broke quorum earlier to derail that law. We'll have reaction from all sides coming up for you tonight at 6. We have now learned the name of a man who was killed in a crash over the weekend. He's been identified as 32-year-old Andrew Joseph Benavides. He died on Sunday after crashing into the 2400 block of Blanco Road. The Bear County Sheriff's Office says that he veered into oncoming traffic and hit a truck. Benavides died at the scene. No one else was hurt. The search continues for a shooting suspect after a woman was shot in the stomach overnight. It was about four o'clock this morning when the victim says three women knocked on her door in the 1500 block of Upland Road. She tells police when she opened the door, a woman shot her. She was taken to the hospital and is expected to be OK. Investigators, though, say about six hours earlier before the shooting, a fight had broken out in the parking lot. Two women crashed while leaving the scene. Someone fired shots at their car, but then missed. No one has been arrested. This Saturday marks 20 years since the worst terrorist attack on U.S. soil. And to commemorate that anniversary, tonight's episode of KSAT Explains is going to be just a little different. The Explains team is taking a step back to hear the stories about that day and what has changed since, as told by several people affected, including first responders and veterans. We'll be live streaming the episode at 7 p.m. tonight on KSAT.com, the KSAT TV app, and KSAT's Facebook page. If you can't watch it live, we'll be posting the full episode so you can watch it on demand later this evening. More help on the way for victims of Hurricane Ida today. Several more truckloads of food and supplies are headed to Louisiana. Volunteers with the San Antonio Food Bank spent the last few days preparing those trucks, which are still in great need. Abel Galvan, the volunteer operations manager, says the nonprofit likes to help people out during times like these, but in order to do that, they need more volunteers. We're not really a big staff, so we rely on volunteers. Nothing really gets done without them. So without their support, we can never reach as many people as we do with the volunteers. Now, if you'd like to volunteer for future events with the food bank, all you need to do is sign up online. All ages are welcome. We'll have a post. Uh, we'll have a link posted on our website there at KSAT.com. While those trucks are headed to the Bayou State, parts of the Northeast are also dealing with Ida's aftermath. Yeah, today, President Joe Biden touring New York and New Jersey, where recovery efforts are far from over. ABC's Rena Roy has the latest. Oh my God, I could just cry. Pieces of wood, piles of debris, and a collapsed ceiling. This church in Manville, New Jersey, badly damaged with Ida tearing through the area last week. This was our kitchen. It's not salvageable. This is just too much. People who live there say they desperately need the money to rebuild. Everything, air condition, heat, refrigerator, oven, everything gone. President Biden touring hard hit areas Tuesday, promising help and resources from the federal government. I want to talk a little bit about the things you think you would need, not just to get back to normal, but to get back to a place where if it happened again, the damage would be considerably less. Four people are still missing in New Jersey. The death toll at least 71 across eight states. Biden then heading to New York City, where the borough of Queens is still cleaning up. Basement apartments and cars wiped out. We never expected anything like this before. It looked like an Olympic swimming pool back here. It was crazy. Down south, Grand Isle, Louisiana, unlivable. I've been here a long time and I can't recognize where everything's at. The president saying we need to take action on climate change. For decades, uh, scientists have warned of extreme weather uh, would be more extreme and climate change was here and we're living through it now. We don't have any more time.
In Louisiana, hundreds of thousands have been without power for days now. Officials expect the city of New Orleans will see everyone's lights turn back on by the end of Wednesday. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Well, let's take a look outside with live cam. Well, actually, we're going to check the tropics really quickly here uh, because, again, everybody kind of on edge since Ida. There is a hurricane in the Atlantic. This is Hurricane Larry, and it's going to end up moving just to the east of Bermuda by Thursday in the afternoon, not affecting mainland United States. However, one thing to keep in mind is that there are going to be some rip currents on the east coast because of Larry. Meanwhile, in the Gulf of Mexico, there's an area of unorganized thunderstorms it has about a 40% chance of development in the northeastern Gulf of Mexico. This particular system will not impact our weather in Texas. Otherwise, it's sunny and hot out there for most of us. 102 in Del Rio, 96 in Floresville, 94 in Universal City, 95 in Lavernia, and 92 in New Braunfels. There are, however, a few showers and storms on the radar, mainly across the Edwards Plateau in the Hill Country. We're going to take an in-depth look at those showers, and we're going to talk about how even though it's going to be very hot, it's not the worst-case scenario. I'll tell you what I mean coming up. Ursula? Thank you, Sarah. Work now starting on a major project on a, on Northwest Military Highway in Chavano Park. Yeah, our Samuel King joins us now live. Samuel, this project is promising some safety improvements. Officials and residents, Tim and Ursula, hope that by adding a turn lane, some of the risk of rear end crashes on the highway will be reduced. The project will stretch from Hebner Road to Loop 1604. Along with the turn lane, it will feature a new sidewalk and bike lanes along with drainage improvements coming up at six more on the project's impact on residents so far, as well as a timetable on when it will be completed. Back in here now looking at uh, traffic. This is uh, I-35 at Wheatner to view there. We have a crash that is closing uh, some northbound lanes. So let's uh, take a look at that uh, here and there you can see uh, several emergency vehicles there on the scene. And so again, this is northbound 35, so that's causing some delays. Have some residual delays downtown. We had that uh, major incident earlier that saw some of the lower level lanes of I-35 closed down, still some slow traffic. So once you get inside uh, Loop 16, oh, excuse me, Loop 410 on 35, 29 minutes now between the northeast side and, and downtown. We'll keep an eye on things throughout the evening and have more coming up. Ursula? Thank you, Samuel. Two members of the Texas delegation visiting San Antonio today as part of a push for incentives to boost the production of semiconductors here in the United States. These chips are in everything from phones to military jets to cars, where a shortage due to the pandemic has been most visible. Without the chips needed to manufacture new cars, the stock of vehicles has gone down while prices have gone up. Senator John Cornyn believes that's just one symptom of a problem with a supply chain that relies heavily on overseas chip manufacturers. Semiconductors are everywhere and uh, the threat of, uh, of having that supply cut off to our national security and to our economy because 90% of them are made overseas is a real threat to our national security and our economy. The U.S. Senate has approved a bill with at least $50 billion to spur research and manufacturing of the chips here, and it is now sitting in Congress. Still ahead on the News at 5, check your cabinets. You might have some products that could score you a little extra cash. Take Windex and Method Cleaning Products, for example. They are part of a class action lawsuit settlement that could put a little extra money in your pockets. We'll tell you all about that and what to look for and how to claim your cash next. Could you use a little extra spending money? Well, if you've bought certain Kellogg cereals in the past decade or Windex glass cleaner, you're due a little cash. It is the result of some class action lawsuit settlements, but as 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz explains, it's up to you to claim it. 
If you pour Kellogg's Raisin Bran into your cereal bowl, you may be able to scoop up some cash. The company settled a $13 million class action lawsuit alleging it labeled certain cereals as heart healthy or lightly sweetened, yet contained excessive sugar. If you bought various Kellogg's Raisin Bran Smart Start or Frosted Mini Wheats between 2012 and 2020, you can file a claim. The deadline is today. The average payout should be about 16 bucks. If you bought eligible Blue Diamond Almond Breeze products, you could get a piece of a $2.6 million settlement. That lawsuit alleged the company misled people about the vanilla flavor. Without proof of purchase, you can claim up to $5. The deadline, November 23rd. And you can clean up a little cash if you bought certain Windex products. That class action lawsuit alleged the cleaners were falsely labeled non-toxic. If you file a claim by the October 29th deadline, you can get up to $10. And similar story, if you bought certain method cleaning products, you may be due up to 10 bucks. Again, the allegation was over the non-toxic claim on the label. The deadline for that one, November 1st. By settling these lawsuits, none of these companies is admitting any wrongdoing. If you're eligible, you can file your claim easily online. We have links on our website. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. We're all counting our cash. Let me, I have a, I have a question. <laughs> It, tur it actually was 100 degrees yesterday, and I had a bet with Spreester, but since he's not here, I don't have to pay up, right? No, you, you'll have to pay up when he gets back, I think. I don't think he's going to remember. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right, Ursula. We did hit 100 degrees, so I'll be your proof if you need any proof. No, no. Honor no, your wages. No, let's, let's, let's move on. <laughs> All righty. Well, uh, you know, we hit 100 yesterday, the first technical day to hit 100 degrees at the airport. But, of course, it's felt like 100 because of the high humidity. Now, today, we actually have, haven't really gotten into the mid-90s. So, not all that bad. We have that weak front yesterday to thank for the 5-degree temperature difference. There are a few areas, though, that are seeing some rain. Let's go ahead and take a look out across the Edwards Plateau here in the Hill Country. Take a look down toward Uvalde. You can see very clearly that there is a shower and storm that's pushing into Yavaldi at the moment. Rain cooled air there. Also moving through Real County, there's a lot of rain just to the west of Rock Springs. And then for our communities closer to the coast, north of Goliad, a sh quick shower there and near Three Rivers, a quick shower as well. Finally, let's talk a little bit about I-10 here uh, in Kerr County because this is a pretty strong thunderstorm capable of gusty winds of up to 40 miles per hour and some frequent lightning. It's heading toward that I-35 corridor from Gillespie County. So Kerrville to Ingram to Hunt, even some people, if you live just northwest of comfort going to be seeing some rain and hearing some thunder and some seeing some lightning as well and what's really cool is on the satellite picture you can see uh, the cauliflower look of those thunderstorm tops there across uh, the uh, hill country. Meanwhile, it's totally sunny around San Antonio and we expect a mostly clear evening. Take a look at this temperature at the airport. 94 degrees. That's going to go down as our high temperature for the day. Meanwhile, it's 98. It's Stinson, 93 in Rio Medina and 88 up at Bernie Steed Airfield and 90 in Comfort. Kerrville, 86 now, but with that rain approaching, you're probably going to see temperatures dip down to near 80 degrees. And as I said that, Temperature fell a degree in Kerrville. 102, though, in Del Rio and 101 in Catula. So tonight, the sun will set at 748. If you're around the San Antonio metro area, you'll be experiencing mostly clear skies, light winds, and a mild evening near 80 degrees by midnight. All right, let's take a look at the radar and satellite across the nation. Uh, now, there is one area that is not receiving any rain at all. That's the Four Corners region. That's under the influence of a high-pressure system, sinking air from the high-pressure system, keeping out rain and making it hot. Look at these temperatures. Right now it's 106 in Las Vegas and 103 in Phoenix, Arizona. Now what you're looking at here is atmospheric moisture content. Anywhere you see these cool colors, these purples and blues, that's very low atmospheric moisture content. Now around this high, it's very dry. And watch what happens. It moves closer to us around Texas and we stay in that dry air. So for the remainder of the week, it's going to be dry and hot. But as we head into early next week, it looks like we're going to receive a fetch of tropical moisture here across south central Texas 
and the coastline. That's going to bring us our next chance for rain again from mainly Monday into Tuesday and potentially even into Wednesday as well of next week. But that's a long time to wait. First, let's take a look at this high res feature cast for us tomorrow. We're going to start off mostly clear in the afternoon. There is a very off chance 10% for a stray storm. Odds are you're not going to see any rain and it's just going to be sunny tomorrow. But if you do get a storm, it could produce some gusty winds. All right. Looking at the forecast, mostly sunny tomorrow morning, 72 degrees, low humidity tomorrow with a 10% chance for a stray storm in the afternoon, but 100 again for the high. The good news is even though we're going to be near 100 degrees, our humidity will be low, so that means no heat index in the afternoon. So even though those triple digits, you can shudder a little at them, it's going to be low humidity. Nicely done. There is a silver lining. We'll take it. Yeah. All right, Greg, is the best receiver in the NFL a cowboy? Well, uh, if according to the cowboy, <laughs> yes, it, he is. We're talking about Amari Cooper. When we come back, is he 100% ready to go for the season opener? He will tell us. And the reaction from the Texans about Taylor starting at quarterback coming up. I definitely feel like I'm back in rhythm right now. I'm ready to go. Um, obviously, I'm still trying to trying to sharpen things up, but yeah, I'm, I'm ready to go. Cowboys $100 million wide receiver declares himself 100% for the season opener in just two days in big board sports. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. The Dallas Cowboys have restructured the record-breaking contractor star quarterback Dak Prescott to create $5 million in cap space. In order to do that, they made $6.2 million of Dak's four-year $160 million deal into a signing bonus as Prescott prepares to play in his first game since week five of last year when he suffered the compound fraction or dislocation of his right ankle. One of his star wide receivers, Amari Cooper, is coming off of ankle surgery as well that kept him out of all of the off-season workouts and most of the preseason, but that has not lessened his opinion of his ability is going into a seventh season in the NFL. Do I think I'm the best? Yes. Uh, have I proven it? I wouldn't say I have. You know, there, there are other guys who um, who have actually put up some great numbers. You know, they've they've had they've taken advantage of their opportunities and stuff like that. Um, so I, I'm I'm just still trying to take advantage of my opportunities and still trying to uh, put up those numbers to lead the league um, in yards, touchdowns, all across the board, really. And only after I've done that will I will I say I'm the the, the, the best um, and, that, and that I've proven myself to be the best. I don't think I've proved it yet, though. But do I think I am? Yeah. There you go. The Houston Texans will kick out their 2021 season a few days later than the Cowboys and they host Jacksonville Jaguars on Sunday in NRG Stadium. Now that head coach David Culley has officially named Tyrod Taylor as his starting quarterback for game one in the midst of the controversy surrounding Deshaun Watson. What do his teammates think of starting the season with him under center? Uh, I think that, you know, he's he's a threat with uh, in three three places, three areas. He's a threat with his arm, uh, his legs and with his mind. And so uh, uh, we fully expect him uh, to make whatever plays are available to him uh, in terms of a game plan and game plan runs. You know, that's not my job uh, and we don't have all of the game plan put in right now uh, anyway. Uh, but uh, I'm sure that he'll be ready to affect the field in a, a bunch of different ways. All right, kickoff for the Texans on Sunday against the Jaguars is at noon. The Cowboys open the season on Thursday in Tampa. So get ready for NFL football starting this week. It's back. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Greg. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. Welcome back. At least uh, one northbound lane is closed there at 35. This is the view from Wheatner after an earlier uh, crash, and that's causing some uh, major delays if you're heading out of San Antonio right now. Crews have been working there for about the past half hour, so that's something to keep in mind if you are heading out in that area, Tim and Ursula. Thank you, Samuel. And thanks for watching the News at 5 with us. ABC World News is next. We'll see you back here for more local news at 6.